Right. Such a good voice, that. Yeah, it's good to know we were being recorded because that's what we're doing here. It's Mary <laughs> Beth Beckman. There's someone robotic. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Your every move is being much. In fact, it's Mary Beth Decker, by the way. I know we're recording, but I got this thought of in all the United States, when people are arrested, they always say, what you say can and will be used against you. And I thought, boy, oh boy, now that we're recording, ain't that the truth? But let's get into the <laughs> interview. Uh, I am so glad to have Kate Wilson here today with Mulberry Mongoose in Zambia. And if you're like me, who studied African on the map back in high school, and I had, that's why I say Africa, so that everybody knows where we're, where we're talking. Um, let me tell a little bit about uh, you and your business, Kate, and then we'll get into some questions because I'm so excited. Uh, Kate Wilson founded Mulberry Mongoose, and I'm reading this because this is the only way I do it right, a jewelry company with heart based in the remote South Luanga, Zambia. She hired and trained seven local African women and one local gentleman to create high quality contemporary jewelry. Her team are highly skilled in converting poachers snare wire from lethal wildlife traps into meaningful jewelry, a unique process they aptly call creating beauty from brutality. But that's sink. Mulberry Mongoose is sold internationally and is credited for making over $110,000 for Zambian conservation. National Geographic, Departures, and Marie Claire have all covered their story and celebrities, including President Bill Clinton, supermodel Dudes and Crows, and actress and conservationist Natasha Mago have worn their jewelry. Through creating and growing Mulberry Mongoose, Kate channels her passion for ethical fashion. Yay. Commercial drive, creating local employment and investing in African conservation. Kate was educated in the UK with a degree in French from Edinburgh University. And I have to say, I almost met you when I was visiting my daughter, Andy, who lived in Malawi back in September of 2019. Sadly, we're, there were some border issues, so I didn't. We didn't ever get to cross uh, the border into a Zambia. Shame. Yeah, we we had a whole thing scheduled, and it was like, no, oh, yeah, thank you. Oh, that's a so, shame. It is. So oh. I'm excited to talk to you. Is this is as in person as we can get right now? Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and hear hear what you have to say about uh, what you're doing. So, thank you for thank being you. here. Mm, thank you for being so passionate about it and interested. I so appreciate it. Yeah, so uh, from a degree in jewelry, excuse me, from a degree in French to jewelry yeah. making in Zambia, <laughs> yeah, that happened. <laughs> yeah, it's a really obvious connect, isn't it? Um, it's quite nice. I like telling this side of the story um, because I think it shows, you know, that we all have a path and um, sometimes we have to come off the path that we think we must do to find our real path. Um, I, I got engaged to a man called Dave, who's now my husband, and he was from Zimbabwe. And I met him in London and I was a headhunter. So I was in recruitment in London and I, I was working very hard, but I had absolutely no idea what inspired me. Um, I just knew I had to work hard, so I was a bit lost. I didn't know I was lost though. Um, anyway, I definitely didn't know what was about to happen. Anyway, Dave, my husband, brought me to Zambia, which was a bit of a one-way ticket. I'd never been to Africa, and suddenly I was supposed to end up living in Africa. So it was terrifying, and it wasn't just Africa. It was the middle of the African bush. <laughs> so I went literally from the busy streets of London um, to Africa that I didn't know, and I literally exchanged sort of fast cars and high heels and... Um, you know, an office desk to trying to get to work with elephant in the way and uh, scorpions on my pillow and there's a snake in the roof and <laughs> my life completely changed and it was overwhelming. Um, 
but what happened that year and I didn't enjoy my first year per se in Africa I think I was extremely intimidated um, because because I was engaged to Dave it was a one-way ticket if I wanted to marry him he, he's from Zimbabwe he he made no bones about the fact he had to be in the African bush fighting for the African bush so I understood that it was a one-way ticket in that regard I wasn't even that in a hurry to get married to be perfectly honest he proposed a lot sooner than I was really ready <laughs> It was all a bit much. <laughs> I found myself in the middle of nowhere trying to deal with this new life. And um, But what a magical thing happened. I met who is pretty much my closest friend, um, Abby. Uh, and she she was living in the African Bush. She was also from England and we were quite, we were very similar. We had a similar humor. Um, and we were the same, we were the exact same age. It's weird. Um, and she was making jewelry. So she taught me to make jewelry and she was my salvation that year in terms of just someone other than Dave that I could totally connect with um, as a lost, slightly lost soul. And uh, he left at the end of that year and uh, I was gutted, but she handed me this box of jewelry and this small jewelry project. And it really was very informal, but something had happened that was building um, and then I found a job working for a wonderful company called Tribal Textiles also in the South Luangra where I, I'm sort of I enjoy sales I enjoy connecting with people I enjoy energizing through that process so working for for Tribal Textiles um, they employ a hundred people who hand paint textiles in the middle of the bush those jobs the jobs that we create in rural Zambia and many places in rural Africa are they are so important. They don't just save one person's life. They save 12, person, 12 people's lives because one person generally will fund another 12 people off one salary. They will all, you know, there, there is such um, a need for employment. And then to create something beautiful that people love and makes them feel happy. For me, it was like a, it was a light bulb moment, whereas I, I totally dig this concept. And of course, at the same time, I was every Sunday I was making my jewelry and I was I was getting better and I was realizing that it was my thing. Um, but yeah, I still there was still a time where I had to make an extremely brave transition. So uh, they got to the point where I needed to to take the jewelry further and really make it my mm -hmm. own. Um, and that was when, uh, you know, I sat down and said, well, so and, and I suppose I love talking about this when when you're addressing lots of people, because I feel like all of us are looking to feel fulfilled and happy and in life. And um, it's scary and difficult. And I was, I was lucky to be honest, to be in the African bush making these difficult decisions because the financial pressures of living in the bush are more reduced because you don't, you're not surrounded by commercialism. So you don't actually need lots of money there. You, you don't really think about um, commercialism that much. You, you, you you know, I was the best dressed person in the bush and I was dressed on clothes that were about 10 years old, you know, it was like people don't mind, they don't mind and it's lovely that. Um, so you can just focus on, and there's just a slowness to life and a beauty to the African bush and just to be so close to the wildlife. And, and just to set the scene, I mean, I think sometimes people don't, don't understand the South Luangra and how special it is as a wildlife destination. Um, one, you know, we had an elephant walk through our garden most days. So with kids in the bush, I've got a photo of my, my little sienna and an elephant about 20 meters away from her, just walking past slowly. She was safe because this elephant was, was just casually, always casually walking through our garden. Or you really do have to check, like if you're leaving your house, you have to look both ways in case there's an Ellie. And one night my husband went outside oh. and there were no lion in the garden like it is not a normal place um but it's very good for the soul um and it inspired oh. me greatly yeah oh that thank you thank you um i i think uh it's funny i'm listening to you right at the beginning you were talking about the things that you had to deal with included scorpios scorpions and um snakes and i think that probably threw a bunch of people out saying like Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna go visit. But, but <laughs> having gone, I'm like, go anyway, guys, go oh, anyway. Shit. 
No, yeah, no, don't it was really just so funny. That. I'm thinking, well, she's not going to go and she's not. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 you mustn't be put off. I yeah. um, Living there and visiting there are two very different things. Oh, oh the South Luangra, to go to the South Luangra is, it should be on a back, it should be on bucket lists. It should be a seventh wonder of the world. Yes. Um, it is too beautiful. Um, but I gotta ask you, what's this, how did you come up with mulberry mongoose? Is there? A, oh, I love story this question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm so proud. This is one of my proudest things about our business, actually, because I can't believe how. So basically, um, I named the business according to the values, and I sat down and I was very careful about the values of the business, and they're completely at my core. And the business was a total expression of my beliefs. Um, but it has been amazing to see it manifest in such a positive way. So I picked the mongoose, the banded mongoose. So it's a lovely, do you know the banded mongoose? They're so lovely. <laughs> I have probably seen pictures, but I, I'm not, I'm not really acquainted. Let's be honest. Oh, you'd love them. You, everyone must love the banded mongoose. So basically they, um, they're, 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 they're small and they, they well, they're mongoose. They're, they're, I don't know if maybe they're a bit like a, a cat with short, shorter paws, maybe would be a one way of describing them. But I'm, they, I'm thinking like we have otters here, which are smaller. No, they're more like, you know, well, lemurs. Do you know, maybe a lemur lemurs, from Madagascar. Yeah. I do know so they're, lemurs. They're, they're like lemurs, but they're in, in, a little bit, because they, but they don't jump around and they don't live in trees. They're, they're I'm trying to think of the best way. You can okay, just- we'll, Okay, we'll get it, we'll find something, yeah. Associate. But the thing that's so special about banded mongoose for me is, so they live in groups and that's how they survive in the bush. They don't have anything particularly, um, they don't have big claws or sharp teeth particularly or venom, you know, because to survive in the bush, you need something because it's a pretty dangerous place. So um, what they have is um, they band together and they work as a team cohesively to survive. So they really are amazing. You can see videos of them all grouping together and fighting off much bigger, um, more dangerous um, animals coming towards them because they kind of collectively bond into this bigger force. Um, you have nanny, you have nanny mongoose, you have mongoose like watching the kids while other mongoose search for food while the other mongoose watch for danger these guys are are slick <laughs> they know what they're doing so um but really the way they survive is by looking out for one another and what i love is the way that we as a business thrive is by looking out for our environment so we uh, employ local zambians who desperately need that employment and we really invest in our team they work incredibly hard they're extremely impressive uh, and we've really invested in them. We've invested in each other. Um, we give back with every sale to conservation and we, we're now hitting $120,000, which for a company of, of, of seven workers, you know, since 2013 is, is not an insignificant value to put back. Um, we take snare wire that poaches snare wire, which is a very harmful tool we convert it into something positive. We take it out of circulation. We stop it from being dangerous and we turn it into a symbol of, of um, something positive. Um, we transform it. So that's not a mongoose, but the mulberry is also really important. We, it was always really important to me. I believe that um, people need to feel joy. And I, and I loved what you said at the beginning of our call and how you, you want to appeal to people's hearts and then their minds will follow. And I really, it really resonates with me that like, you don't want to scare people into doing good. You want to make, you want to uplift people. And all the great people of the world have uplifted, you know, Nelson Mandela for me is a true hero. He came out of prison and uplifted people. He could have done the opposite, but he didn't. And it takes incredible integrity what he did. But so, so the mulberry is just a beacon of, look, we're gonna create something really beautiful that you really wanna wear. And it does do all this good, but it's about looking beautiful and feeling creative and, and feeling good. And um, it's also, we're very, my team are amazing. Like they, they deliver a service that you could get anywhere in the world. They live and work in the most, one of the most challenging environments. We've had mm -hmm. elephant bash our workshop door down once. Um, we've had baboon regularly raid our workshop and steal the float money, the fly. <laughs> you know, we have things going on that aren't normal, but 
that that doesn't affect the service we give our clients. We absolutely passionately look to make every client have a really special first rate service. Um, we're not using our location as an excuse. We use, we're using it to, to say, this is who we are and this is what we do and this is why we're special. Wow. So that's why it's Marbury Mongoose. Thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> I, I have this question uh, that it sounds when you talked about how Dave, your husband Dave is is really interested in 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 saving our saving the bush. But I had the question: How did you connect jewelry with conservation? But it sounds like it's a family value for you all. That I, I was wondering if you had any more to share on that. Well, it's really interesting when I was when I was as young. I think one of my first, I always knew that I cared about the environment. Like I've always loved um, being, I've always found peace from being outside and with the animals. I've, I, I, the peacefulness of, of that uh, is mean important to me as a young person. And I grew up in the countryside in England and I was always like, I was always trying to save ducklings um, and do things, you know, have I had so many rabbits and, and made sort of kind of, lots of frogs born and all that stuff so I love it but I also mm -hmm. remember when I was I, I do remember being so I'm very proud of the fact we work with WWF um they stock Marlboro mongoose and um very young I started sponsoring WWF I remember seeing their brochure when I was probably about nine or ten uh, I was young and I oh no I was younger I was probably about eight so junior school, and I just felt so strongly. I it was like flies of the tigers, and and the, you know they were running out. And I just as a I just looked at it, and I just felt so desperate about the whole thing, and so fired up. And so it was in me. Um, it was a part of me. And then oh, Dave is very much a soulmate, um, being very important. I mean, as much as he wrenched me from my kind of sort of life in London, but it was what was needed, um, but I just didn't know it. Um, I needed that big shift and I needed to be physically relocated to Africa to find the confidence of self to start pursuing what I was really supposed to be doing. So, um, but he also, he's, he's an incredible person. He is absolutely passionate about conservation in Africa and is, is still very much his career is in the fulfillment of that. But he's also a great person in terms of he he has enabled me, he has inspired me. Like he he gives me the space to chase what's my dreams, basically, and the courage to do it. Uh, and he does it himself. So I've been incredibly lucky to find the right person to facilitate everything. Without him, none you know none of it was possible, <laughs> which is a bit annoying because in the moment I'm homeschooling, he's annoying me a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but actually he's been great as a husband oh, I know. <laughs> I, I, yeah marriage is tough <laughs> can i just say that <laughs> oh my God, we love we're, we're in love and marriage is tough okay okay got it but he's a, he's, a, he's a good yeah for all the many good reasons yes yeah yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> I'm, I'm going to ask you, I remember in, probably in the 90s, the logging industry uh, was, was um, fighting because we were trying to save the, uh, the places where the spotted owl lived, which was forests. And they turned it into an us or them. Do you want us humans to have jobs or do you want this silly little owl to take our jobs away. And it, it became so antagonistic. Um, and I think that, that was a, a very short-sighted way of understanding uh, how humans are gonna survive yeah. in the physical world. I, and you've taken a different turn. Uh, I'd love, you know, how did, how did that become so clear that people have to be part of the solution I mean, literally, ah. you know, and making a living and, you know, all that stuff. Oh, my goodness. It absolutely. I mean, I think I think the benefit of probably moving to the bush. It, it's hard to know if that 
it just seems so obvious. I mean, I remember Al Gore did a really, really funny, um, like a, a presentation where he put um, like that balancer and he put like a pile of gold on one side and then the earth on the other as, as a sort of way of saying, we're trying to weigh up, which is more important? Is it the gold? And it's just like, how are we in a situation where we, it was very clever. It's like, oh, I love that. Um, that, that funny um, sort of meme that goes around, it's like, oh, it's such a shame that um, we can't get trees to to give us like telephone reception. It's such a shame that shame they only give us oxygen. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's, like it's just for me, it's like, well, it's so obvious, guys, we need the planet. It's not gonna work without the planet here. I don't know how, I think for me, it, it I, um, at the same time, I don't think, I never believe in, I don't believe going on the attack is ever the right way to make a change. And it is, everybody has a challenging, everybody has challenges in their life. And, and you might look at someone who's very wealthy and think, well, they don't have challenges. They will have challenges. And, and, and to be honest, we all have challenges. And I think what's been very interesting for me working with rural Zambians who are I'm extremely connected to having spent years working with a team and not always harmoniously like there's often been huge cultural rifts that we've had to work through, which has built a stronger respect on both sides. But you know what, my Zambian team are full of grace, humility and happiness. Now they have gone through serious trauma. They've, I've, I've had team members lose kids, lose fathers. Uh, they do not have a lot of means at their disposal. When they're sick, it is extremely difficult. It is to get to the nearest hospital. It is a 40 minute road you know, drive when you don't have a car. So you're like in the middle of the night with a sick child, you don't have phone data because you've run out because you've run out of the budget. You don't have a means of finding help quickly. You've then got the logistics of trying to get your child to a hospital that isn't even that good. Um, so they do have much harder lives. And it, and yet, I would argue they are often considerably happier than a lot of people I know have much easier lives. So I feel like we've got to understand that having lots of things isn't what happiness looks like and I think we're getting there I think we're like oh hang on that whole marketing commercial drive isn't quite ticking all my boxes I think it's taking different people different time frames to get there but ultimately depression is at its highest and we have more than we've ever had before so there is a correlation here that we've got to wake up to but I think what's the challenge is is moving away to a more balanced existence everybody if they gave themselves a chance to quietly sit and watch wildlife, everybody would feel the, the benefits that is in our soul. That is absolutely what we should be regularly doing. And that would feed us and we would realize our desperate need for it. And we would seek to protect it, not for it. It's patronizing to say, well, I must protect the animals. It's like, no, you need the wildlife. You need everything. It's not about you protecting it. It's a bit similar in Africa. It's like protecting the Africans. It's like, no, you know, they have something to offer you and you have something to offer them. It is a reciprocal thing. And I feel like it's, it, and, and Moby Mongus is very much around those principles. It's a circle. It's not saying any one person in that circle needs sort of we're all integrated. It, it, we've got to integrate the solutions. And I think we, we do see it, um, but we just need to help people that, I think a lot of people that don't see it are having very challenging time and are probably not feeling very good. And so it's sort of helping people feel good. And I love watching those, um, you know, programs where you, you take someone who is having a tough time and consequently are quite unpleasant and you bring them into maybe a, a you know a very wild environment and you watch the transformation of that person and and see them for who they really are and it's like you know that that for me is very exciting and and the more we do it the better you know beautiful thank you for that um yeah i just i'm in a, i'm in the suburbs uh washington dc and so um i still i still get out and get my fill of uh, oh, uh well i got five animals in the family plus 
we're out walking and uh, the joy of uh, just having a female wild turkey hanging around. <laughs> it's <for us. laughs> like, oh, well, this is so cool. And the, the birds that get when I haven't put out the uh, bird seed because, you know, they stare at you and say, where is it? <laughs> so I, it's delightful. I, so I don't, I, I, I'm even in my little space, which is not the bush. Um, I, I also get filled with uh, contentment and desire to, to keep this planet going because it, it does, it does provide something uh, that I don't think we were with that. I think we're going to miss it when it's gone. <laughs> I'm just going to put it that way. We're in, we're in real trouble if we let it go and I also feel like we want purpose we all want to feel like we matter and um that is important to every single one of us does matter and finding that purpose is will come through doing good not because I think sometimes people separate the two but it's like no they're they're integrated you don't have to go away and do good and then come back and feel good you're doing good will make you feel good if you pick the right doing good for you. And we all have a different version of what that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, you know, that's true. I do, I do have ways of doing good and it does, it does fulfill me. It's just, it's funny. I just, I do, I, um, yeah. Silly things like we're walking on sidewalks and there's a worm that's, you know, a sidewalk is huge. So I gotta stop. Dogs are like, what yeah. the heck? Is she have to pick the little worm up, put him back in the grass. He's like, ah, oh, no, this is okay. So I do that too. I totally do that. I oh. always, wow, that's brilliant. I'm, I really agree with you. It's like, that, that poor worm. And <laughs> I just keep on like, I have one worm that I have to, I have to help. And then like five foot steps later, there he is. I'm like, okay. <laughs> no, that's okay. brilliant. Yeah. I'm with you. I, um, the other thing I do is we have plastic bags and I say, well, maybe I need to pick up some stuff. And all of a sudden a plastic bag will show up and I pick it up and I start pulling the trash while I'm walking the dogs. You, you know, cause it's like, so environment says, are you serious? There's your bag, pick it up and let's go. <laughs> brilliant. No, it's brilliant though. No, it's brilliant. We're very lucky that, you, you know, that you yeah. will do it. Yeah. So, um, I, did you want to show? I have some of your jewelry here because I haven't given it all to my daughter-in-law yet. But uh, talk about your jewelry and, and how it helps yes. people. Or, um, I'm going to do that right now. Okay. I was just, I was just thinking how um, haven't been, haven't got my trademark earrings on today. Sorry. Um, so this is snare wire. Um, so I just. To understand how sort of challenging and how talented our jewelry makers really are, I think I don't know if you can see. I physically can, I cannot do anything with this, even this little piece here. Oh. <laughs> it is brutal. <laughs> That's the best I have done there. So this is a, a terrible tool of destruction for wildlife. It's absolutely shocking. It gets laid like a trap in. Um, the bush around watering holes, places where wildlife congregate. Uh, and the, they it's almost like this bit here um, would be like the limb of the wildlife would get trapped, either a neck or, or a foot or, or what have you gets trapped and then it snags and then it slowly tightens around the wildlife and ultimately slowly maims and, and, and kills the wildlife. Um, so it is absolutely horrendous, this tool. And it is, it's the biggest killer of our iconic wildlife. It kills leopards, lion, wild dog, elephant trunks get taken off, um, giraffe, everything. Um, so it's awful. And the thing is, unlike a gun, poaching with a gun, you know, if you see a poacher with a gun, you know something's up. But it's quite difficult when you've got a piece of wire, like how do you it's much harder to locate the poacher in a way because it's quite a, a also it can be stolen you know you can go to any fence and cut this wire up you just need to be strong so it's quite easy to get your hands on the wire 
um wow. yeah so it's tough um so it's the brave it's they were rangers um and wildlife rangers across africa and across the world who really do risk their lives to go on patrols to collect this wire and what's really like um uh incredible i think is these rangers they are in danger of being killed by poachers being shot at by poachers but they're also in danger of being killed by the very wildlife they're trying to save um, and that does happen you know the, the wildlife doesn't know what they're up to and elephant could could come out of nowhere on a patrol and, and you'll be in real trouble. So that does sadly happen, but it does show how incredible these rangers actually are. And um, obviously they're also big breadwinners um, for their families. So in rural Africa, they're, they're um, bringing money back into their family home. They're responsible for, as I said, at least 12 people's going to school and feeding them. So they, they're amazing. Um, so what my team do is they they then convert something like this to to something like this. So this is our concentric circle necklace um, and bracelet, for example. Um, and I think these show really well. Um, you've just seen how hard it is to bend that wire. Now they've they've managed to hammer it flat, and then they've twisted it into these shapes and then riveted it together. And they also we make these amazing. Um, clasps here with the wire which i think is so cool yeah. um there's also my i'm wearing here my unisex snare bracelet which i love with the clasp um this is the one that wwf um stock as well um but we do so many different designs we do sort of chunky designs we do delicate designs um we 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 really mix it up but we've really um when dudes and Cruz, the supermodel wore necklace our original snare necklace which is 27 pieces of show-stopping snare wire it looks amazing um I could try and grab you a piece hang on oh please um it's gonna take me a while to i'll, I'll show you it's not quite the same because i don't want to disappear off camera too much but this is another real show-stopping piece of uh jewelry where you've got the snare wire circles and in between you've got oh. your freshwater pearls um, I'm really a big fan of that one. Or, um, or we have more delicate pieces like um, this bracelet here, which is um, just really easy to wear and really sweet, like a coiled piece of snare wire with some turquoise, and you got a little elephant charm on the end there. Um, so we do more simple, we do more simple pieces as well. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it, it's um, it's really exciting, isn't it, when um, a supermodel. Medusa Cruz is very passionate about elephant conservation and of course looks really stunning in our necklace. <laughs> so we were very, very honored and, and President Bill Clinton and uh, Hillary Clinton also wore our bracelets and Chelsea Clinton. And even actually, we didn't get a photo, but even Sting and Leo DiCaprio were gifted Mulberry Mongoose because they are big oh. conservation. Because we represent uh, conservation organizations uh, like the Thin Green Line Foundation in Australia who support rangers specifically because when rangers die, you know, their families are then left without income. So Thin Green Line Foundation then supports those families, for example. They do a lot for the rangers themselves, which is incredible. And they gift Mulberry Mongoose as the perfect uh, product to sell and to gift because we've connected the rangers and what they do, a way of raising funds and also giving donations back our side to conservation. So it's a lovely link. Um, yeah, so they they gifted Leo DiCaprio, uh, Sting, uh, and um, Bill and Hillary Clinton Mulberry Mongoose. Just when I was about to have uh, my second child, Ava, I was waiting in the airport. I was about to fly to go and have her, and I got this mail saying all these famous people have worn Mulberry Mongoose, and it was only my second year of running Mulberry Mongoose, so it was an extraordinary moment in our Beautiful. lifespan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll, okay, so I'll show this because I um, just, she'll get this before this comes out. I got this for her. Um, this. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you still got a label on. Love that one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that one. And some earrings. Let's see where are they? Hold on a sec. I'm, keep, I'm keeping one for myself, but. Come on, guys. I'll pull one out. 
I thought you'd like this because it's just yeah, the snare leaf earrings. They're yeah, lovely. They're very simple. People love them because you can wear them every day. And I think people, I tell you one thing that I love about we get this compliment a lot. When you wear more remongous, it gives off, it gives off like an energy because people will always say to us, God, when I wear more remongous, everybody comments on on my jewelry and and what's so nice about that is then the story of conservation of zambian employment of how amazing our team are it gets told and it, it's just that you said you know energy it's just that positiveness you know because often if you comment on someone's clothes they feel guilty and they're saying oh I got, I got it in the sale oh i didn't spend money on myself and it's like no you you know let's embrace feeling good and let's bring yeah, the energy out when you can say something positive about your jewelry and feel good yourself about the value you've added, but also the way it looks, I love that element of what we do. I think it's cool. It's very cool. It's a, it's a really lovely combination to wear something that makes you feel good and you know you've done good, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. <laughs> is there any, you know, I've, I've gotten everything I, I was going to ask. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share? <laughs> Well, first well to sometimes say people to ask you. me in the back of their head, and I, 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 I never want to leave without just asking. Um, yeah, no, thank you for for reaching out and for wanting to spread more bimongus. I think it's one of the happiest things about. It's funny when you you know I started doing more bimongus. I had those values in mind, and I'm thrilled at how it's grown. And I hope we can keep keep growing what we're doing and. In, in increasing our positive impact but there's been so many extra positives that have come it's like a like a magnet for positivity and connecting with people like you you know i wouldn't know you if it wasn't for mulberry mongoose and and you feeling uplifted and then i learn about what you do and the value that you add and i feel really fortunate to do something that is a magnet for positive people and um you know, I get so disheartened by the news because I'm like, that's not the world that I see at all. Working on something that I love every day. I just see how many good people there are in the world and just, yeah, good people wanting to do good and looking for ways in which to do it despite, you know, busy lives and a lot going on. And I think that's remarkable. I think that people are, can and are remarkable. So, yeah. and you're exemplary to I need that. to hear that. Thank you. Because, uh yeah thank you yeah it means it's you, um, you just hit hit my heart again oh thank you so i hope we get to meet in person at some point uh thank you for taking the time out of the very busy schedule <laughs> disorganized <laughs> schedule i think thank you for being so patient and kind when i've been all over the shop sorry no it's okay and so uh, if people are looking for your website, it is at literally mulberrymongoose.com and I'll have it written so people can Thank find you. it. And, um, yes, yeah. please. And we're on LinkedIn, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. And, at, you know, you just I'd love it if people wanted to follow it and then they can learn more about what we do. It means such a lot. And share, just sharing our story um, is incredible for us. So please, if you do... If you do really resonate with this, then please do follow us and keep keep an eye on what we're doing. The team are so special. They're honestly, every like on Instagram, everything really means because we're small. I think you know people take you when your order came in, Mary Beth. Everyone gets excited. We like we love online orders. It really means so much to us. It gives everyone a buzz. It's so sweet, and they know the whole team know what's happening and and get properly excited. The, the energy is brilliant. Handwritten note of thank you. Holy cow. <laughs> How good is that? And, okay, all right. And one more thing. And and you would think, especially given the mail that we've gone through in the last year or so with, with the pandemic, we got I got your stuff really quickly. And uh it, it, the cost was super reasonable. So um if anybody's thinking like, oh, it's going to cost me as much to get it mailed back as it is to buy the jewelry, ain't so, folks. It's just amazing. So, yeah, and a big shout out to the states um, because you actually are a very friendly company to bringing in 
products from Africa. You've got the AGOA agreement. You, you've actually um, made laws so that it's very, you're definitely the easiest country that we export to. But we do, DHL, we export everywhere within pretty much seven days and it's um, $15. And sometimes we do free freight to encourage people to experience what we do. So keep keep an eye on like social media for special deals too. But yeah, we that's the more part of what we do. We want to make sure that this is, this is cool and you 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 know yeah. it's not happening. So yeah, thanks for saying that because I yeah, that's a great cool. people will wonder. So anyway, I wanted to do that. Thank you so thank much you. for your time, Kate. This was oh, thank been- you. I'm so glad we've connected. I've loved it. You're yeah. so awesome. Yeah. And I, I really do hope we meet soon. <laughs> well, right. soon is probably pushing our luck, but not <laughs> with this yeah. pandemic going on. But anyway. All righty. We'll, we'll see you later. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>